I had some Mormons come to my door, or not was Mormons, it? it was Jehovah's Witnesses, sorry. Okay. They, they, they kind of tr- come through every so often, and, and they, uh, it's always frustrating when they come by because uh, I would love to talk with them, but I'm never, I'm always sort of busy with something else, and it's like this huge context switch, and uh, anyway, I, uh, uh, I was not really able to give them a g- proper response, but they were there promoting huh. The gift. The gift. The gift. Do they have something to give you? <laughs> they, they claim to. Okay. The, uh, the gift uh, is uh, supposedly that God gives everlasting life by Jesus Christ our Lord. And, and this is based largely on John 3.16. God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son uh, so that everyone exercising faith in him might not be destroyed but might have everlasting life. Okay. And I wanted to unpack this because this this is... Uh, it seems seems kind of good on the surface, but it, it really isn't when you when you dig into it. And so, what kind of gift is this? Well, there are strings attached, and it's not really a gift. And it makes you party to murder, and it might be a free pass to killing, and uh, it's kind of deceptive. Uh, so, lots of lots of creepy stuff. Strings attached. Well, the gift is called a ransom sacrificed in Jehovah's Witnesses and other Christian literature. Mm-hmm. And ransom only means exchange, if you look that up. So, so even the scripture is sort of uh, touting it as one thing and touting it as something else, um, depending on whether they're trying to work the guilt screws or whether they're trying to woo you with, uh, with this free thing. And even the quote itself, you have to exercise faith in him, um, which means uh, following him or, or perishing, as as said in John ten twenty eight through. 29. Oh, what a nice gift! What a nice gift, and which also <laughs> means you know, it, practically speaking, that you got to go worship and you got to go tithe and be involved in the church and be an upstanding it's guy. It's like I, I got a gift for you that you can't refuse. <laughs> You're right. right? It's just one of those sorts of gifts, right? And in uh, Corinthians nine six, Second Corinthians nine six, Paul says. Uh, but un- unto this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So, uh, you, you know, you kind of get out what you put into it. It's kind of like stone soup. Okay, <laughs> it is. It's a lot like the stone soup. Yeah, there's not much there to begin with, and what you put into it is what you get. Okay, so is it a real gift? Well, um, we're living now. We, we have life now. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be answering the door. Um, <laughs> And how will I know if I have everlasting life? Well, apparently I have to die or, or not die. Uh, and there's no way for me to, you know, know this now. There's no, and I have to die to get there. And once I die, uh, there's no way of interacting with me. So, Well, also, if you die and there isn't everlasting life, you won't know it. I won't know it, right. Yeah. And so this, this gift is sort of unfa- also unfalsifiable, this is a technical term, and, it, and it's also something more like an IOU that I can never really redeem. I don't get a chance to redeem it. In fact, if I try to redeem it, I'll well, be that's sent faith. to hell. That's faith. Right? right, you have faith that you're going to have that right. payoff, <laughs> that you're going to spend your whole life in service and in, you know, yeah. like, living your life according to what is required to you by this book and by this church or by whatever. And then at the end of the day, you just kind of hope that there's that payoff. That's going to that's going to work out. Yeah. Well, I'm not so sure. And it's worse for Jehovah's Witnesses because Jehovah's Witnesses believe that exactly 144,000 faithful Christian men and women from the Pentecost of 33 CE until the present day will be resurrected to heaven as immortal spirit beings and spend eternity with God in Christ. Did they say what happens to everybody else? Everybody else, I don't know. I think they I think they just die like 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 uh, normal people. Um, But uh, but unfortunately, there are 834 million Jehovah's Witnesses, and many of them are dead already. So there's a bit of a math problem here. Pretty low odds, right? Like, (laughs) what what, are the the chances that hadn't been met already? So uh, is the gift they're giving me something I'm really going to get, or are we cheating somebody else? and, and are we robbing from the dead because most of those guys died presumably thinking they're going to get the gift? And so somebody, somebody, there's a, some prestidigitation going on here. And these folks coming by the door, you know, they're, they're selling me this lottery ticket with a vanishingly small odds of me, me <laughs> right. actually getting any of this. And, and uh, That would be an interesting question, though. So how many winners have there been? Right. Right. Well, supposedly all the church hierarchy get to go. So I, over time, as more and more of them, you know, become yeah. church leaders, 
and die so in that position. So once there's 144,000 church leaders, we're sure. We're sure, yeah. We're, we're, we're close the doors and <laughs> okay. screw you, you're out. So, so this we gift can all will, just quit. <laughs> this gift will be n worth nothing at all. Um, of course, other vari variations of Christianity spin these stories differently or these numbers. Um, so another, another problem with this is that the gift is the murder of Jesus, who was an alleged sacrifice. So it's the gift of a murder, murder from a murderer. So lucky us. So it's kind of like getting a casserole from Jeffrey Dahmer, you know. Yeah. You, you may not want to eat that. Uh, you might want to, you know, think about that. Well, it's kind of creepy. It's like, how do we get eternal life? Well, first you have to go and kill this person. Yeah. It's like, that's really creepy. Yeah, and out of love. Yeah, I, I, I just want to say, it's funny. I watched a movie. Uh, I think it was called The, the Destiny. or Des It's like an old 1922 film, silent film. And I only bring it up because there's a, uh, the, the premise of the movie is about two lovers and one of them dies and the other one goes to visit death and says, I would like my lover back. And he says, I don't have that power. But she has read in the Bible that love is stronger than death. And, oh gosh, I'm giving spoilers. If you haven't seen it and you're going to see okay. it, I'm, here's the spoiler markers. I'll put my hands down when I quit spoiling it. So if you want to, like, turn off sound. So anyway, um, she says that love is stronger than death. And so she, she, you know, appeals to him that the Lord has told her this. And he says, well, the Lord won't allow me to give back a dead, you know, a dead person. He goes, there's one thing we can try, which is you, if I'll put you uh, in a situation where you can save these three people. And if you can stop me from killing them, then you're, I'll give you back your, your partner. And she's unable to do it. She's unsuccessful in all three attempts. And at the end of the day, she's begging and pleading. And he says, okay, there's only one thing I know that might help. And he said, you're going to have to trade a life. You're going to have to go and get someone else's life and give me that in exchange. And at the end this of the day, a creepy movie. <laughs> at the end of the, well, it is creepy. At the end of the day, um, she ends up like trying several people voluntarily, and then she accidentally sets fire to a building, and, and people are going to die. Everyone gets out except a baby, and so she knows if she lets the baby burn to death, that she'll have her lover back, but she can't live with that. And so she runs in and she saves the baby, and basically asks death to take her instead because she doesn't want to live without her lover. And that's how it ends. And so, <laughs> but the thing is, well, I figured that was good, how is, it was going to end anyway, right? She can't. She could not bring herself to sacrifice someone to for someone else that she loves. She basically was like murdering somebody to help right. a person I love right. is wrong. And you and I had a call okay. last time. That's the end. Last <laughs> time we had a show where where somebody was saying this is really awesome. And uh, anyway, um, so. I don't want to be party to or get benefit from a murder, right? So I don't want to be part of this gift. I really sort of <laughs> right, keep, right. keep me away from this thing. And <laughs> the the Old Testament God's most common interaction with people is murdering them, and it's never a gift, and it's always in self gratification of God. It makes God happy to kill people, and it's just his nature. So why are we suddenly claiming that that another murder is gift from God? you know, a gift, um, when it's really sort of God giving a gift to himself alone, and, and, it, and he's the beneficiary. And who made this rule that there had to be a sacrifice, right? Or, the, or lots of them, right? The whole Old Testament was based on, oh, an, on oh, blood sacrifice. Oh, yes, yeah. Until it reached the human form in the New Testament, and it's like, yeah, wow. Yeah, so who made, who made this rule? Well, was it some other God that, 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 that God himself had to follow? Uh, in which case he's kind of powerless and you should worship that other god. Or is it the god, the same god that made up the rule, in which case this is just really sort of snuff porn and self-gratification. Well, it's, it's arbitrary. Yeah, yeah. It's like, make me happy, sacrifice something to me, right? And, and it's, it's, very, it's all very creepy and, and nasty and I really want, I'm repulsed by yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, how blood works as a moral cleanser. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, for <laughs> like, like how, how we even got this idea like, that, you know, clean, but it's red. blood somehow <laughs> appeases, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Like, let's yeah. kill something. Yeah. I did something really horrible. I need to go kill something. I need something to go kill to something, to yeah. Appease. Oh, boy. Well, and this, yeah. and if this gift was part of God's plan, um, why have Christians murdered Jews for fourteen hundred years? Why, if this was, you know, what was meant to be, and and what was all, you know, supposed to happen, um, why, why, why do Christians murder Jews? Um, and and this is this is, uh, you know, they were sort of uh, apparently upset about. 
about uh, Matthew 27 of 25, let, let his blood be us on, on us and our children, which is one of, the, one of the famous quotes of the Bible. And this quote had helped make Christianity the religion with the highest kill rate of any religion at all. And so apparently this gift is also a free pass from any such responsibility for this killing. And so you get the jackpot regardless of who you kill, as long as you believe and as long as you tithe and go to church and all that. Martin Luther said, be a sinner and let your sins be strong, but let your trust in Jesus Christ be stronger and rejoice in Christ who is the victor over sin, death, and the world. So, you know, go, go sin. Um, so in summary, so this gift is like an IOU for a lottery ticket that makes you party to millions of murders and you have to hope and you have, and to have any hope of using it, you have to devote your time and money to God's snuff porn victim and just hope for the best. Thanks. <laughs> It so, is like a horror movie. It, it's like a horror movie. So I'll pass on this sick and twisted gift, and I, I feel sorry for the not so terribly bright people selling this gift door to door. Um, so I, I actually feel like they're victims, and this gift is another failure of Christianity. And for, for Christmas, I have a thought for you. This would make a great t-shirt, and I'd love for you to do an illustration for it. Oh, gosh, I don't know. I haven't done For Santa part. so loved the little children that he slaughtered and rendered his beloved Rudolph, his favorite reindeer, that whoever believes in him shall be have nice leather shoes under the tree and lard enough for all the Christmas cookies. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it's gruesome. <laughs> but, but it's very much like John I mean, 16. I'm, I'm really I'm, trying to get it. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like, I mean, I understand the concept is labeled sacrifice, right? And so I guess the idea is that you did something that uh, somehow violated a rule from God, and then you have to somehow, it's not sufficient that you're sorry that you did it. Um, you then have to also give up something right. as well, payment you know, an original sin plays into that. Make it's, up, but it's weird. It's like, how does this make up just for wrongdoing? Having been born, born human, right? Oh yeah, no. I believe me. I get that. <laughs> it's it's the very dehumanizing yes. religion. Um, yeah. Because they basically are like your human innate tendencies are not human and innate. They are like derived from a fall of man, and that's. And you're inherently you know, evil. That's why everything is wrong that's with you. Right. Being human and is bad. Wow. Lovely stuff. It is. It's so beware of any pe <laughs> anybody coming to your door and g offering gifts. Yeah, happy holidays. Yeah, happy holidays. Let's take some calls. Did you talk to them at all? I mean, uh, not terribly much. Oh, okay. I just wondered. I was yeah. Curious. I should I should do that more. I don't know. I, I'm not that into it. Like when I see the Mormons coming around, I'm the type that's like I'm pulling the blinds. I know. Like, I, know <laughs> I know. Martin was big into it and brought him in and. Yeah. I mean, I might one day. Him for hours. We'll see. <laughs> if, I, if I'm in a magnanimous <laughs> mood or something, like feel like just going through it in person. Okay.